As vaccines became more widely available and more businesses have called on employees to return in person, ridership on the MBTA has been ticking back up for months, and so it seems have MBTA accidents. Back in July, two Green Line trains crashed in Brighton, sending 27 people to the hospital. A federal investigation determined one of the train's drivers was speeding, and he now faces charges. Then last month, BU professor David Jones died after falling from a rusted staircase near the JFK UMass station in Dorchester. The Sunday before last, nine people were hurt when an escalator malfunctioned at Back Bay Station. And then just a few days later, a red line train derailed at Broadway Station in South Boston. No one was hurt in that one. But these are just the latest in a long series of troubling events on the T, including several other derailments and equipment failures, which led an independent panel to declare in a 2019 report that the agency's approach to safety is questionable, citing poor leadership, financial pressures is some of the reasons why. But when asked about the spate of recent issues last week, Governor Charlie Baker said this. Well, first of all, um, the MBTA is safe, but it is old. To that end, Baker emphasized the billions of dollars his administration has allotted to MBTA upgrades and repairs since he's taken office, arguing he's done more than any other governor to fix the T's problems. Joining me to discuss are Representative Bill Strauss, he's the co-chair of the State House's Joint Committee on Transportation, and Stacey Thompson, she's the executive director of the Livable Streets Alliance. It's a nonprofit for biking, walking, and transit. Stacey and Chairman Strauss, good to see you both. Thanks for being here. Thanks for nice having to be us. here. Representative, can I start with you? The most immediate concern, I'm sure, for every T rider or would be T rider is is the T safe? Is Baker right or is it unsafe? I think it can be better. The uh, what the T does every day in providing transportation for tens of thousands of people is uh, quite a task. But the goal has to be, and I don't think we're there yet, that there is just this super reliable, safe system. Accidents do happen, but something is being missed, and the public understands that, to be sure. Yeah, before we leave that, though, uh, the, the escalator uh, debacle, uh, the head of the T said that it was inspected and passed inspection as recently as July 31st. So if they are inspecting and things like that pass, what more can they do? Well, clearly, uh, I, and I don't doubt him that he, this was inspected in, in July. I read that as well. But it does mean that uh, the safety regimen has to be more than it is. Is it safe, Stacey? Are you convinced? Yeah. So I ride the T every single day. Uh, it is safer to get on the T than it is to get in a car and go on the highway. By and large, the T remains safe. That does not excuse preventable um, accidents on the system. And I would completely agree with Representative Strauss that we can and need to do more. Um, in the safety report that you mentioned, the T, the report suggested that the MBTA hire 125 new safety positions. That could have been a person double checking the, mm -hmm. the safety work on the escalator. But, you know, uh, in defense of the governor's position, Chairman Strauss, uh, I think the number I read this morning is that in 2015, something in the neighborhood of $500 million was being spent annually on capital improvements, repairs, et cetera. And then now the number's up to $2 billion. That's a pretty significant increase on uh, the administration's behalf, is it not? Well, I don't see that $2 billion number. I read that, and I've been looking over the documents. But there's no question they're spending more than they used to. But we're still at a, a daunting issue that with maintenance issues alone, not even talking about the roads and bridges, but with maintenance issues alone at the T, we have a need of about $10 billion and another $25 billion for what they call unconstrained capital expenditures, which means taking care of the transformative things we need in terms of climate issues, system expansion, things like that. So they're spending more, but everyone who follows this, I think, uh, acknowledges that there's quite a bit more to go and the financing stream hasn't been finalized yet, even though the House did try last session, uh, it did die over in the Senate. You know, one of the things that beyond the financing, Stacey, that a lot of people talk about is this oversight board of the T's. 
is uh, the, the seats are vacant. Uh, would filling, I mean, I assume everybody, including the governor, and I think his people have said they're going to fill them imminently, would say obviously filled is the goal, otherwise you wouldn't need the oversight board. How much of a difference would that actually make, and why aren't they filled? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question to ask Governor Baker. Um, as as uh, Representative Strauss knows, um, the legislature did pass a bill to give the governor power to appoint these um, positions. This is after the legislature gave a year extension. So there's been more than enough time to sort out what, who should be on this board. And if they were here, they could be asking the hard questions. They could be the ones going behind the scenes, understanding what went wrong. That's why we're all sitting here waiting to find out, you know, what's next? How do we fix these problems? Why haven't they been named and, and representative? And if I could, sure. Uh, what Stacy says is true. And um, I don't like to be cynical, but one of the surprising good things about the control board since uh, 2015, when it came into existence was two or three times a month, it became a very public place where uh, the T could be asked questions. There were public forums as well as the uh, members of the board. And they began to challenge in a very aggressive way what the administration was doing on safety issues. And if you were just a little bit cynical, you'd say they became a thorn in the side of the Baker administration. So I'm beginning to wonder why we've gone so many months without a newly constituted board. All it takes is a signature from the governor putting some people back on that board. So you think it's a totally intentional act on the part of the administration rather than dancing around. You are you are suggesting that he is not the intent is spot. Intent is hard to know, but I can tell you the facts say uh, we've been sitting there since July without these vacancies being filled. And they've known for a year that they were going to have these vacancies to, yeah. to fill right away. You know, Stacey, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, regardless of intent, I think this is this is literally the job of the governor. This is one case where it is in his power. He is the one who needs to appoint these folks. And we've sent him a list of folks who are ready, willing, and, and qualified to do the job. So the question you know, right back to, to what Rep. Strauss says is why and why not right now because we need this oversight. You know, speaking of right now, uh, uh, Representative, this is like a Groundhog Day, and I'm sure it has been for you too. Uh, I used to lobby, and I used the term loosely at the State House in the 80s. That was I remember when you were there. <laughs> and you were a little <laughs> boy, if I remember correctly. Is that not right? Thank you. Thank you. Bear when, shot. Uh, in all seriousness, this almost the same conversation has been had not for years, but for decades. And the Democrats, Charlie Baker is a Republican, I think people know that. The Democrats don't just control the legislature, they are the legislature, essentially, almost unanimously. If Baker is spending a lot, but not enough, if safety is an issue, but old age is definitely uh, an issue, why don't you just do it rather than debating back and forth with the Baker administration as to whether or not needs doing. And if Charlie Baker vetoes whatever you do, then you override his veto. You have more than enough votes. What's the problem? Well, certainly we've been putting lots of resources out there. Uh, as, uh, as recent as January, we made available to the governor an additional $16 billion in authorization uh, in all modes of transportation. I was happy with the outcome, but always feel we could have done more. Uh, so uh, what is particularly frustrating in talking about the T and the control board is uh, when we do uh, adopt these authorizations and then the things don't happen, uh, we do uh, look over at the governor and say, uh, you're our, our partner in these projects, if you will, and it's time for you to step up. I do think the legislature, and this is something the House undertook, last session, uh, we need to provide a very reliable financing scheme. Uh, Mass Taxpayers puts it at a billion and a quarter a year, just like a when billion you buy and a, a quarter house. Additional a year, a billion and a quarter more a year. Additional a year because it's that financing stream, like when you pay your mortgage, you don't have the money to buy the house on that day, but you need a stream to purchase those things that uh, 10, 20, 30 billion dollars of expenditures and we're going to need that to have the fully operational transportation system that the public demands. And you've heard me say it here, and it does feel like Groundhog Day. 
uh, but yeah, I have to keep at it. You know, but and you were quoted, I Stacey, before I get back to you in a second, uh, Chairman Strauss, you also quoted in the paper saying the financing is an assortment of bad choices. I would argue from the outside, it's an assortment of good choices. There's a <laughs> issue before the voters next year that would raise two billion, uh, uh, the so-called fair share amendment, the millionaire's tax, I know they don't like it called that, but that is what it is, raise a billion dollars a year for education and transportation. There's a ton of federal money lying around, admittedly one time, but we're not gonna see again. So it seems to me it's an assortment of pretty good choices, is it not? The, uh, uh, in addition to the ballot question, in the ballot question, I don't consider purely transportation financing because I think of transportation financing in terms of money that you can secure bonded borrowing. And we do that through an uh, arcane thing, the Transportation Trust Fund. So while I did vote to put the ballot question uh -huh. on the ballot next year, it's not committed funds that I can guarantee you could plan the kind of uh, multi-year plan that I prefer to see. So when I talked about the bad choices, we have a gas tax now, which is the heart of transportation financing in Massachusetts. But the goal is that gasoline, fossil fuel sales will go down. Right, you want people to drive less, reasons. I understand. So then yeah. you look at different kinds of, uh, whether it's tolls or road it. charges, whatever, okay. and those are the bad choices that people yeah. probably don't want to hear about. Stacey, what were we going to say? I want to agree, but correct, and say they're not bad, they're tough. And the tough, tough. and this is any, any balanced budget. This is, you know, um, the representative knows most days I'm, at his door asking for things, but this is an area where we worked together and agreed on something. This isn't just about the T. We have crumbling roads and bridges across the state. Our regional transit authorities are suffering and the fair share amendment, which we also support, will not solve all of that. The voters, you know, we do want the voters to show up in 2022, but if you need to make repairs on your house, <laughs> right, you wanna make sure you have lots of sustained balanced revenue streams. So if we're looking at our long-term solutions, we want a mix of you know, fair share, um, maybe some more progressive revenue streams and maybe some of those tougher choices. So we have a nice balanced package that we can depend on year after year instead of constantly hitting a crisis. You know, the House took that vote up, the Senate has not done that yet. Yeah, you know, we only have a, about a half a minute left, uh, uh, Chairman Strauss. Uh, to use uh, Stacy's word crumbling, there was a crumbling stairwell that was crumbling for 20 months and nothing happened until David Jones fell through it to his death. How can something like that just, I understand there's a jurisdictional dispute, which to me is enraging. How can something like that get unfixed uh, or at least not shut down uh, over 20 that, months? That's a horrific tragedy. And uh, going back to 2009, uh, that stairway and that road, Columbia Road were identified for transfer from the DCR to MassDOT. Uh, and I know the investigation will take place, but it's something that we all imagine anyone we know uh, could have found themselves uh, in that situation. And I am certain they will get to the bottom of it. And this jurisdictional issue is one that has been brought up by many people over the last decade through two governors. I don't wanna pick on, on Governor Baker, but uh, both governors during this period uh, had responsibilities here. Uh, Chairman Strauss, Stacey Thompson, thanks for your time. I hope your wishes become reality. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. For having me.